Lesson 9.2b, Finding the Prime Factorization of a Number. A prime number is a whole number greater than 1 that has exactly two factors, itself and 1. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11 are the first five prime numbers. The prime factorization of a number is the number written as the product of its prime factors. The prime factorization of 18 is 2 times 3 raised to the second power. The factors of 18 are 2, 3, and 3. We have 3 twice here, so we're going to raise it to the second power. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 3 is 18. We can make a factor tree to show the prime factorization of 18. We think, what times what is equal to 18? Well, 2 times 9, but 9 can be split into the factors 3 times 3. So we have a 2, a 3, and a 3. And 2 and 3 are prime numbers, so we write our prime factorization. We use exponents when a factor is listed more than once. 3 is listed two times, so we have 3 raised to the second power. It's telling us to find the prime factorization of 65, and we think, well, can 65 be divided evenly by 2? No, it can't because of that 5. Can it be evenly divided by 3? Mm, I know that 5 times 12 is 60. 5 times 13 is 65. Is 13 a product of two factors? No, 13 is prime. So our prime factorization of 65 is 5 times 13. So we won't always have exponents when we find the prime factorization of a number. So we can make a factor tree to find the prime factorization of 160. Starting our tree with different factors won't matter. Here we're starting with a 2 and an 80, because 2 times 80 is 160. Here we're starting with 4 times 40, and here we're starting with 2 times 80, but we're splitting it up differently. The prime factors will be the same. No matter what we do, we've got 2 raised to the fifth power times 5. The first factor pair doesn't have to include a prime number. So here it does. 2 is a prime number, but here we started with 4 times 40. When we find factors for 80, we find 2 times 40. When we find factors for 40, we can do 2 times 20. And for 20, we can do 2 times 10. We could even do 4 times 5, couldn't we? Then for 10, we do 2 times 5. We count how many 2s we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 2 raised to the 5th power, and we have 1, 5. We have 2 raised to the 5th power times 5. When we did it this way, we had to split the 4 into a 2 times 2, the 40 into a 2 times 20, we split the 20 into a 4 times 5, and the 4 into a 2 times 2, and again, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 2s, so we have 2 raised to the 5th power and a 5. And even if we did it this way and split the 80, instead of doing 2 times 40, we could do 8 times 10, we're going to split the 8 into a 2 times 4, and the 4 into a 2 times 2, and the 10 into a 2 times 5. Again, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 2s, and 1, 5. We draw branches down for each factor that can be written as two more factors until we get to prime numbers. And circling each prime number can help us write the prime factorization. It helps us identify the prime numbers. Sometimes our prime factorization will not include exponents, and sometimes it will. For 66, we think, well, that's easy. That's 6 times 11. But we can break 6 into a 2 times 3. So our prime factorization for 66 is 2 times 3 times 11. This one's easy. We know 5 times 5 is 25, so it's not multiplied to anything like here, we have a 2 times a 3 times an 11. It's just 5 raised to the second power. For 52, we ask ourselves, can 52 be divided evenly by 2? Well, yeah, 2 times 26 is 52. 
Then we have 26. Can that be divided evenly by 2? Yes, 13. And 13 is not a product of two factors, so we know the prime factorization for 52 is 2 squared, or 2 raised to the second power, times 13. We can use a method called the sieve of Eratosthenes to find prime numbers. We use a hundred chart and cross off multiples until the only numbers left are prime. You can look in the description of this video and there's going to be a link to 4th grade math lesson 5.5 part 2. And we did this. And you'll have a list of prime numbers which will be very helpful. You can also just make a list of the prime numbers yourself so that as you're doing the prime factorization, you have them right next to you. So now we've finished part two. We're going to go on to the last part of this lesson, and we're going to be using a ladder diagram for prime factorization. Have a nice day, and until next time, bye.